<laughs> Our guest on the program is here as the owner of the radio station. He is uh, also an elected Republican, as are all of uh, the delegates and senators out of the Eastern Panhandle. His name is Mike Cormby. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Corey. Good morning, Mr. Stubblefield, sir. Good morning, boss. Now, <laughs> which which is interesting, uh, coming from you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So do you want your walk-up music or not, Mike? No, we don't need any music. Let's get to it. Are right, you getting it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Around here, we just call him the boss. Yeah. All right, let's let's talk uh, first and foremost. Let's take on the SSAC, which is a uh, I think for thirty years I've been complaining about the SSAC. It's a bit more it's a bit more uh, pre- uh, recent for you and your complaints about the SSAC. But tell me what may uh, happen legislatively with the SSAC and the de- House of Delegates and Senate. So I think the first thing that we passed through education um, just the other day, it's it's going to the floor um, today, is allowing Hope Scholarship students to play sports, um, which essentially means uh, we already had the homeschoolers, but this essentially means somebody from Faith Christian Academy could play sports for whatever school uh, or or district they reside in um, if their uh, school doesn't offer that sport. Um, Through that committee, through the talks through that, there was a number of things that came up where if you know, Spring Mills offered lacrosse, for instance, or something like that. Um, you wouldn't be able to do that in a public school setting. So uh, a number of us, of us on the Education Committee kind of looked into that, and we looked around, and we have introduced a bill, HB 3543, which would essentially make or, or have the WVSSAC promulgate rules uh, under the legislature, so their rules would be under review of, uh, of the legislation. So everything that they currently have written as a rule would eventually have to go under review from the legislature. Essentially, their rules would be under the scrutiny of, of the legislation. We're, do, we're dealing with uh, secondary schools, so these are public schools, private schools, public charter schools. Um, well, I think we should have some say in some of their rules um, that they do. So in other words, if let's throw out a hyp- hypothetical here. Let's say uh, uh, Martinsburg, whose football games uh, we air on this radio and TV station and do every single week all the way through the semifinals, they make it to the finals, and the SSAC says, no, you can't come and cover this game because we're doing it on the statewide network, and you're not welcome. That may be out the door now. I mean, essentially, it could it could be just some of the rules that they have taken up that a lot of that have a lot of us scratching our heads, um, going, why is that? Well, um, the answers we get are because that's the rule. Um, so um, they don't answer to any folks. They're not elected. They're, they're, they're semi quasi non government government organization. Um, so this just brings them in line to be to answer questions. It's just like if you're you're listening to your favorite pro football team, they make it to the Super Bowl, and the NFL says, "I'm sorry, your local announcers can't do the game. You have to listen to it on our Super Bowl right. network." Right? Yeah. It's a garbage rule. All right. Uh, and so uh, the House has a, has a version and the Senate has a similar version, Mike? Yes. Yeah, I think it's 603 is the Senate bill. Um, actually, Patricia Rucker was a co-sponsor on that. That's kind of how I uh, learned about it. I just copied their bill completely and I introduced it on this side of the House. Um, it got introduced on the final day. It's, it's one of the, the last bills there, but um, I was very excited to see a number of us on education co-sponsor after the fact. Well, I'm not a fan of the SSAC. I find them to be an arrogant, unnegotiable organization that at this point uh, has nobody reining them in, so they feel like they can pass anything that they want and enforce anything they want. And uh, the, the sooner they're taken down a notch, the better in my book after dealing with them for 33 years. I, I'm going to call this the Matt Miller Law because, you know, obviously Matt's been um, – complaining about this for a long, long time, and, and you know, he, he's been begging me and begging me to do something, um, and this is, this is, we're not trying to take them down or do anything else like that. We just want them to comply with, with the rules. Well, I'd like to take them down. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I know you would. You know, here's the thing. If, if you are the only authority, and, and you're arrogant about it, and you won't be reasonable, then you deserve to fall, and and I would I would be the loudest person cheering if they got taken down a notch, 
is I'd be right there beside Matt Miller because I've had to deal with them, and I'm not a fan of them at all. And that if that sounds better, it is. <laughs> Bill Stubblefield. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'm supposed to jump into this, Mike? Yeah, go ahead, because if I keep going, I'm going to get an FCC violation. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I think uh, we need to move well, on. Right. No, I'm going to stay on this, uh, this subject, but I have to admit, yeah. I do not know very much about it. I don't have the history that Rob has. I'm not, You're lucky. I'm not on my rant mode like Rob is right now. <laughs> more uh, more credit to him. Uh, and But I was struck by one thing you said, uh, Mike, and that is your bill – HB 3345, I think it is, uh, would have have the legislators to review all the uh, all the rules and all the all the passings of the SAAC. If I understand that correctly, isn't that well, a, isn't that an overreach by the legislators? No, no, no. It, it's it, it's promulgating the rules, so their rules will be under the scrutiny. Um, so just like any other um, organization, whether it's the DEP or the DHHR or uh, Economic Development, all those um, different entities have rules and, and, and their rules are under. So um, it just brings them in line with it's the same as the you know, Department of Education. We, 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 we get to look at their rules and say, hey, this is, this is what's going on. Um, but the SSAC kind of falls out of that because of their own their own organization. So it just brings them in line with everybody else. Okay, well, you, you still confuse me a little bit. Uh, so you can read the rules of the uh, uh, Department of Education and the others. Do you have any oversight on modifying these rules? We do, yes. I mean, okay. uh, most, of, most of them do have oversight, but the SSAC does not fall under the Department of Education. Well, the only thing you can do right now, if you disagree with the SSAC, is sue them in court, and then it eventually gets taken to the state supreme court, possibly, and then they make a decision, and they generally side with the SSAC. But where where do we where do we stop having the the legislators put their fingers in every pe- in every pie on the block? This is a good pie to go into, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I I know we have the, we have one we're, that we're elect, we're elected to to make laws and make rules and and. This, this is something that we cannot have any oversight on, and it's every secondary school in the in the state um, is under one organization, and it's their their way or the highway, um, and that's just too much power, in my opinion, Bill. Respectfully. Well, and, and you may well be right. I'm talking about something I know very little about, but that's not unusual. That's why <laughs> that's why Rob invites me around the, around the show a couple three days a week, not knowing what I'm talking about. But still, I find that uh, where where, where do the legislators say we're not going to get involved? Every You can fall back on this argument that we're the elected officials, these guys are not, therefore we need to get involved, we need to influence the rules, we need to influence the regular. To me, that is well, an overreach. When the public is complaining on a weekly or daily basis about an organization and they have no input or um, any, any, we're talking thousands upon thousands of kids across the state being affected by this, and it's it's always the complaint that this is happening and there's nothing the legislation can do about it unless we can put these rules in or pass laws. So uh, it might be oversight, but when you're hearing from people across the state that there's too much power and there's no um, no oversight these are the things you have to do um, if they were if they were doing a fantastic job and everybody loved them I don't think you would have to see anything happen but uh, uh, but to carry this to the next logical step uh, the legislators would be a, uh, a police force and a police force on each one of the state departments they already have that on each one of the state department. Each one of the state departments. I mean, they're falling in line with all the other different uh, departments. Well, so it's it's promulgating the rules so that you can go in and, and challenge um, or, or say, "Hey, what's why are you doing this?" Well, and I have people answer. I would think this philosophy more along with the democratic uh, Democrats' way of thinking than Republicans. Republicans' way of thinking is stay. Yeah, keep I've been, call, ha- I've been called a liberal a lot in the last week, so. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> hey, that's what we that's what we like to hear, Mike. It means they aren't changing you. It means they aren't changing you, brother. Um, if I if I could add in here while we're yeah. on the topic of um, the West Virginia SSA. 
SAC. Um, I believe it was last week. Um, Senator Weld was on the on the program, um, and he was mm-hmm. discussing um, the opportunity um, through legislation for transfers um, for student yes. athletes. Um, I know that you sit on um, House Education, so I wanted to really hear your opinion on the the proposition. So there is a Senate bill coming up. I don't believe it's on our agenda. We have a double session today um, of education because we didn't get out. Um, we didn't get to have our meeting yesterday, last night. So we're going to do a double session um, in education, try to run a bunch of bills. Um, I see it both ways, Corey. I, um, I, I see why they have that rule so that people don't do not um, take advantage. And I, I think th- this is a parent or a adult problem. Mm. This is not a child problem. I just want kids to play sports. Um, if I transfer from out of state, um, I don't have to sit out a year. Um, if I transfer, if I move, and my parents move from, let's say, Martinsburg to Inwood, um, because I'm in the same district, I have to sit out a year. There's certain things, and and again, I, I don't know all the rules that they have, so I'm I'm on both sides of this one, and I'm really eager to speak to um, all the people involved. Yeah, I, I just wanted to get your opinion on it. You know, knowing that you're in, yeah. um, you know, the House committee. Um, I know it's coming, and and this is the first of of many that are coming coming like this. I know the WVSSA AC was not happy with the um, Hope Scholarship. Um, bill that we ran that allowed Hope Scholarship kids to play sports. Um, and then that, that was just, I just think it should be, Mike, kids should be able to play sports. If the private school that you attend yeah. offers that sport. Does then the, you cannot transfer. Then you cannot, you cannot transfer. transfer to, yeah. Because that is, right now, that's kind of taking on its life of its own on our Facebook community. Yeah. Well, why, why why don't they, you know, but if they, so if they don't have the sport, so, then you so can play So what happens is, you know, state, and state money goes, state money follows the child, correct? Yeah. Uh, so, so about 4,700 or so, state money follows each child. The county money stays with the public school. So, obviously, the, 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 the private school or the, or the the Christian school or the academy or whatever you want to call them doesn't get um, you know their share of that that county money, so my understanding and my my thought process was you know what if the public schools are offering lacrosse football whatever basketball and your private school has basketball you cannot go and play for Martinsburg or can't go play for Spring Mills, uh, but if they're not offering what and they have to do all the same rules that the regular kids do so they have to still try out they have to still make the deadlines they still have to have a credit in the school um, so there's there's plenty of rules in place that it doesn't get abused Bill's putting his finger up he's been <laughs> negative to you today Mike and I'm not going to tolerate that on this show I don't think he's been negative at all just that uh, you know for, for for me, this this bill has the WSSAC bill has not run yet. It has not come up in committee, so we mm-hmm. introduced it. I, you know, I'm obviously I'll try and get it to to committee, but we're we're halfway through the session. Um, you know, I think I passed my first bill, which was a tiny little thing, um, and I I'm having a hard time getting my small business bill out of finance. So, by the way, Jackie Long says this is overreaching. Jackie, I don't often do this, but I disagree with you 100. percent You're completely wrong. This is <laughs> Jackie, just Jackie, I agree with you. <laughs> Bill's also wrong. So two wrongs don't make a right. Three yeah, three lefts do. Let me go back to the clarification. No uh, Corey Corey's very nice. Nice to you, Mike, letting you off the hook. I'm going to kind of pull you back in. And from what I understand you say, uh, there's part of it that I fully, fully support, and that is promoting letting someone from a, uh, a charter school or other schools p- uh, participate in sports. I think that's important. We should do that. The one thing I may have misunderstood you is when you said that what you, what the bill will do will allow – the legislators to go in and look at all the rules and to change the rules as they see fit. I don't know if that's what I, you said I or not, but that's, that's, that's I don't extended. think that's really how it works, though, okay. Bill. Um, I hope not. No, Bill's, Bill's spreading rumor and lie out there again. <laughs> no, I, 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 I hope we're, not. We're not, not. Trying to, we're not trying to rewrite all their rules. Their rules are just under the scrutiny of, uh, of the legislation. So they would come in and explain their rules to the legislator. And if you don't like them, you say, take this rule out, we're going to substitute this rule in this place? Uh, 
Well, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen that happen. I don't know how. You know, if Rob was involved, it would. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a rules committee that that that, that does all that. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly the details of it. I just know they'd be under the scrutiny of the legislature. Let's let's talk about this alcohol bill, Mike, that allows the state to import <laughs> wines that have uh, an alcohol rating the currently fact, higher than. The fastest bill to, to go through the legislature yet. I tell you, anything <laughs> gambling and liquor seems to fly through here. Yes. Um, it started with Craig Martin from Monster Distributing just placing, uh, sending me an email and saying, hey, this doesn't seem fair. I thought it, I agreed with him. I put a bill in. Next thing you know, it was in uh, government organization on the next day. It passed, uh, went through three readings and passed yesterday. And this will allow the state to import wines with a higher a alcohol content, many, many of which come from Italy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. so the ABC actually uh, agreed with us and actually raised the rate, the alcohol content to 15.5, because what they found was they were finding people that had a 14.2, and they didn't know, like the, the warehouse didn't know that this was a 14.2 until it came in. So it was kind of a, they came back and said, it would be a lot easier if we just raised it to 15.5 and it'll take care of all wine and we don't have to worry about this. You know, i got to so, have my Chianti Classico or Reserve, <laughs> and if it's not here, I, what am I going to do? And, and a lot of the reserves are a little higher. They're usually in the 14.4, 14.8 kind of category. So I don't think this really, um, it, it'll get us some higher end wine, essentially. And there's nothing um, wrong so, with that. I made Craig Martin happy, and then, you know, uh, I didn't realize how many people loved us and jumped. <laughs> it would be so on board. So. Hey, we watched the Form Energy debate on Friday in the House of Delegates. We had it live on TV as it ended. Delegate Bill Ridenauer, very passionate about not wanting the state to put money into this uh, investment. Uh, we had Steve Roberts on earlier from the chamber explaining why it's a necessary evil. If you don't, the companies go to a different state that's only too happy to take the jobs. Uh, and, and how, I, I can't, it looked pretty lively, but how lively was that in person while that was going on? Extremely lively. Um, all good points. I mean, I, you know, I think some people went a little too far. You know, <laughs> It, to, to me, it came down to, um, you know, we've been very beneficial in Berkeley County from these investments. And, uh, you know, whether a company has something on their front saying they want to do green energy, that's not really for me to say. What I do see and hear is from the people of Weirton saying, we want this. And if this was in Berkeley County, I would have voted for it. So that's where I kind of went. Uh, if you look at Mitch, Mitch Carmichael's record, 20, in 2022 alone, six billion in this investments coming in. This company was was you know is, is we own the land. Um, this is one of the better deals that that we've had, um, and it it the only reason it um, got so much fire was because of some investor was was you know Bill Gates or something. But we always all use Microsoft computers. We all order from Amazon. So whether an investor is is you know, on the left, really doesn't make a difference to me um, as to whether it's a good deal for West Virginia. And $2.1 billion in investment in the, the northern panhandle, when I talk to my colleagues from up there, is going to be a huge impact for them. You've been accused and of being a... another deal coming down to follow that one for that spot, too. So You've been accused of being a liberal socialist. Uh, I think the word Nazi has been thrown out there on occasion, too, in regards yeah. to the state putting money in to bring in private industry. Yep. Mike, a lot of criticism done, about this. But, yep, we did it for Procter & Gamble. We did it for Nucor. We did it for you know all of them. Um, so we've been doing it for years. If you're going to be in the economic development game and if you want to grow jobs in your state... These, this is the way to do it, um, and you've seen immense growth over the last um, couple of years. I mean, 120,000 120, jobs added in the past 21 uh, months, 3.8% employment growth after the past year. We're top 15 in the nation um, in, in employment growth. Uh, GDP up 15.2%. I mean, I can go over this. Uh, plan. If you're saying, oh, it's a Chinese company, it's a this company, we have 145 country, companies from 33 countries employing 30,000 people just in 2021. Um, so 
signaling out this one company, I think, uh, is ridiculous. Corey, did you have something? I saw you lean in for a moment. Too. No, no I, I do about, think yeah. the Admiral has a follow-up. Though. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, Mike, you used, or Rob used some uh, labels that were thrown around quite a bit. And unfortunately, yeah. I, I think the labels were thrown around by a representative from the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, wh- how were they received by the, uh, by the legislators as a whole? Um, but I, I haven't put it this way. You know, Mike Hyde's Facebook account was hacked, or another one was created with his name on it, and it, the, the things, the but, things that the but that Mike was not just ridiculous. Mike, Mike um, was not the one that was la- uh, throwing these labels out. Well, I didn't throw any labels out either. Um, I was labeled as this and that and this, and I'll just take it. Um, I, I don't mind people's opinion. I'm down here to do a job, and you know, it, it is what it is. It's part of the. Uh, it's part of the the, the the climate. I'm sure there's going to be things that people agree with me or don't agree with me on, but all I can do is do what I think is best for Berkeley County and what's best for West Virginia. Yeah, I, okay. I, you misunderstood me. I did not. I know that you or Mike Height were neither one were throwing the labels out, but there were some of your uh, one of your fellow delegates did throw the labels out, and I just wonder how that was well received by the body as a whole. Uh, I'm choosing to ignore the question, I okay, guess. Okay, good. <laughs> Fair. Try to be as political as possible. Fair enough. Sorry, Fair enough. Bill. Okay. It's the way it is. I, I really don't want to address yeah. the labels, especially okay. the labels on the floor. Um, we're all down here to do a job. Um, just because I don't agree with you doesn't make me a worse person than you. Put, that, put it that way. How does that sound? Mike, we had uh, Ken Apple on yesterday. He pointed out in the Senate's version of their tax cut proposal, their claim that they will be fixing the marriage penalty doesn't hold up when you examine what they're trying to do. <laughs> is that getting any traction in the House? Does, is anybody concerned about the fact that the marriage penalty will not be fixed, according to Ken? Well, I, uh, that got brought up yesterday, but uh, I mean, amongst the members of the House, was we don't like the bill. You know, we just don't. It, that Amendment Two was was, you know, overwhelmingly failed across the state, and we're we're bringing that up. So I'm not a huge fan of the Senate bill. I don't. I haven't heard from leadership when we're taking this up and what our plan is. Um, obviously, I've spoken to people off the record um, on what they think, but the members or the body. Um, doesn't like the plan at all. It wasn't that wasn't kind of part of the deal. Um, and I'm eager to see where we go and what that looks like in the future because um, it's 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 crunch time now, and we're going to start having much longer sessions. I think we start double sessions next week, so uh, we'll get into it. And I'll listen to my fellow colleagues, and I'll listen to leadership, and I'll make the best decision that I can make. All right. Any final questions for Mr. Hornby? Thanks, Mike. You're always informative. I appreciate a, it. A, is that a question or that's a statement? Right. No, that's a statement. That's the, I, I, think, I think Mike And I don't, know whether, um, I don't know whether we have time, but the DHHR, I sent over to oh, um, yes. you guys a, a kind of, this is the best kind of explanation of the DHR split up um, that I've seen. Obviously, I'm not on health or, you know, or those things, but when you've broken it down into little pretty boxes like that, um, it makes sense. I um, mean, it, it kind of, he kind of goes, okay, this is this does make a little more sense, and let, we know the system is broken. Let's try something new. Yeah, it, it, um, I don't have the boxes in yeah. front of me. Can you summarize how they're going to break this up, Mike? Yeah, so you've got the Department of Health is one, the Department of Health Care Facilities. So Health Care Facilities is all the um, hospitals. Uh, Department of Health is kind of the Bureau for Public Health, Office of EMS, the Office of Threat Preparedness, Chief Medical Examiner. And then you've got Department of Human, Resource, uh, Human Services, which is Bureau for Medical, Bureau for Social, Bureau for Behavioral Health, uh, Child Support, and then Family Assistance. Assistance. So you got those three entities all kind of answering to one office of shared administration or reporting to office of shared administration. And then the office of the inspector general um, has been broken out. And these are the people that are actually investigating all the other people. So they've broken it out um, into you know four distinct kind of phases and, and, and keeping the, the people that are reporting or investigating kind of out on their own so that they, they're not answering to their the people they're investigating, which I thought was really good. All right, very good. And and what kind of traction will that get? Uh, I think it's I think it's gonna pass overwhelmingly. All right, very good. Michael, thank you for your time. Always 